Hello. 2009 saw the release of Tekken 6, which was the first Tekken instalment on the PlayStation 3, and in fact the only canonical instalment of the Tekken series that we actually did get to see on the PlayStation 3. Now, in terms of this game, it seems that Namco have re reached a certain degree of perfection in terms of the speed and fluidity of the in-game, you know, one-on-one -on -one fighting dynamics. I mean, it's, it's probably not even worth going into that because as we've seen I, I outlined this in the first Tekken game in the first Tekken review and it's something I've touched upon in every Tekken video to date but it's that you know Namco have succeeded in updating the speed and the graphics and the fluidity and the, the quality of the combat system in each Tekken game. Tekken 6 is no exception and you know, it has it has reached a sort of a pinnacle here that was later kind of again slightly embellished for Tekken Tag Tournament 2. But being Namco, you know, it, it, the Tekken 6 was actually a landmark game in, in many different ways. It wasn't just this. And it seems, you know, Namco are never quite content to just update the graphics and update, you know, the quality of the gameplay. They always push for something a little different, which is, again, something that we found to be a trend in each Tekken game. Uh, again, Tekken 6, no exception. And it is perhaps the most radical um, sort of revision of the, of the Tekken franchise we've, we've seen to date. And by that I mean, and I, I actually, uh, on a personal note, I totally wasn't expecting this. I actually purchased the game and thought perhaps I'd bought a weird spin-off or something because it wasn't actually I'd seen noted in any of the reviews or you know anything I'd read a, about the game you know prior to buying it. But the factor I'm getting at here is the fact that the scenario campaign mode, as it's called on Tekken 6, uh, but we might as well just call it a super neo updated version of Tekken Force mode such as it is actually demands precedence over the arcade mode and this is evident right from you know the starting menu there's no longer an arcade mode versus mode so on so on it's actually scenario ca campaign mode is the primary mode of Tekken 6 and within this you have you know the more traditional arcade mode or as it's known in Tekken 6 you know arena mode and you know the scenario campaign mode it's sort of is sort of being offered as the main feature of the game and the the uh, arcade mode or the arena mode is you know a sort of much more watered down version of the 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 traditional ar arcade mode that we're used to so it seems that the features of the game have switched to a degree so where in every previous game we have the uh tech and force mode or we have you know the devil within or you know the kind of you know the additional mode is the mini game and it's kind of comparatively shorter than the arcade mode and it's just you know to unlock some additional goodies and it's kind of you know just a fun you know little addition that they're giving to us and the arcade mode you know the 10 rounds that you fight is supposed to be you know this kind of really um cool enduring sort of thing that you can replay with each character that has actually been turned on its head and what we have here is the scenario campaign mode is being posited as that you know the main mode that you have to work your way through it's how you unlock a lot of characters and you know it's how how you sort of progress through the story arc of the game and the arena mode is sort of this weird little spin-off and you only fight i think in fact you fight four or five rounds so there's no real progression in the 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 arena mode it's kind of switched places with this scenario campaign mode which is you know my, my personal feelings on this i i'm neither here nor there about it i as i've said before i really love tech and force mode and i really love scenario campaign mode i mean, I'm in, in fact really glad that they gave this you know gameplay dynamic you know more precedence than they have in than they have in previous games the fact that it's come at the expense of the more you know the longer and the more enduring kind of arcade mode um i wouldn't say i'm necessarily disappointed by it but i was certainly surprised by it as i as i said before you know i wasn't expecting this i didn't know that this was how the game was being laid out i have friends that are long time tekken fans as well and they really don't like the scenario campaign mode they, they they're kind of out of their depth a bit with it and you know th this is this is kind of attributable to them being more traditional gamers as as I am as well you know I kind of got introduced to Tekken right off the bat with Tekken 1 so you know it was it was somewhat foreign to me while we're on this note just digressing slightly um and I'm sure this is probably how Tekken you know this may well be how Tekken is popularly played these days it may not 
even be about the the scenario campaign and the story and the narrative and you know all these more traditional modes because i noted as well underneath the scenario campaign mode on the menu the first the second thing down that you had was online online mode and then below that you had offline mode so the fact that not only have these two modes been separated online and offline but online has been given that you know nudge upwards um in in precedence on the menu so this leads me either to think that namco are trying to force people into this sort of method of play you know playing online with people you don't know or that's you know literally what people are doing these days i mean i personally have no idea i don't know much about online gaming i don't play playstation 3 online at all so you know it's not something that i'm personally familiar with but that that's another thing that kind of took me out of my depth very slightly because it made me realize that how how radically the realms of video game video games are changing and how radically these kind of household names of, of video game franchises are themselves changing as well um again you know i'm 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 not really being ne- negative about this whole online thing i mean i mean i don't really care however you most get enjoyment from games is is you know fine by me it, uh, it's just something that i found very interesting to note about the tekken franchise in in particular as it is such a far cry from what we'd seen in in Tekken 5 and and the predecessors before that so yeah i mean uh, just for anyone who's unfamiliar or hasn't purchased Tekken 6 but is kind of into the franchise in general uh, Tekken uh, sorry yeah um scenario campaign mode is essentially a very embellished version of of Tekken Force mode that goes on you know there's a considerable number of levels and they are quite extensive as well it's almost like a neo streets of rage you know it's a really well thought out and really uh they you can tell they've invested a lot of time and effort into making scenario campaign mode perfect you know perhaps even at the expense of arcade mode which is why it's only got you know four rounds there um but yeah i really personally liked it and i really it really kind of it is kind of nostalgic in a way it does remind me of these old sort of streets of rage you know golden axe sort of games where you're running around um you know, uh, you know, fighting a, a variety of foes. At the end of each level, you generally fight a, a sub boss who is a main roster, um, a main character in the in the Tekken roster. So, for example, you know, you'll fight King or you'll fight Armor King. Who, um, yeah, I'm really gra- glad Armor King's back. By the way, that that guy's great. Um, but yeah, that that's how it works. Interestingly, if you've watched any of my earlier videos, I've I've said this numerous times, but I feel that Tekken Two was the best Tekken game in terms of narrative because it really has the tragical elements of a Shakespearean drama you know and I mean that seriously you know with the whole devil angel thing Kazuya on the revenge mission it was just a really tight plot it really worked well and even though it was you know it's it's a fighting game in the fighting genre I feel that 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 storyline had a lot of clout to it and it was very um it was worth investing your time in that's why I find it so interesting that as Tekken gets more and more kind of abstract and weird and loose with its plot lines, um, such as the the as Azizil, I think um, I'm not sure how you pronounce the the name, but you know the main antagonist in this game, who just sort of appears from nowhere. It's this weird Egyptian demigod sort of demon thing. You know, as it gets kind of wayward and convoluted and sort of ridiculous, Namco seem to be investing more time in it. So. You know, in in this scenario campaign mode, you're basically I think you're trying to find Heihachi, and you go through each sub boss, and you know it's kind of tying together these these plot lines with the Mishimas, and um, the new character Laz, who, you know I don't, you know he's pretty cool actually. Um, his gameplay dynamics are really brilliant, but Laz is, you know, in terms of his story, it's a bit loose. He's like a kind of illegitimate son of Heihachi. So now you have another Mishima. There's Jin. There's Lee Chao Lan, there's Kazuya, you know, it's it's kind of getting a bit mental, the plot, and I don't really pay attention to it anymore, which is a shame, because Namco are kind of trying to push the narrative element a lot more thoroughly than they ever have done before. Um, digressing slightly, and this is something I wanted to cover anyway, but in the opening FMV, it's much longer than what we've seen before, and it's a lot more bound up in the plot elements. So, for example, you see Jin with the... Uh, you know, the Mishima Zaibotsu army that he's built and things like that. And it takes a very cinematic turn in that instead of having this kind of fast, kind of funky music that we've seen in Tekken 3 and onwards, it has this kind of orchestral soundtrack. And they're trying to be very cinematic and sort of 
sincere and narrative based with their with their cutscenes and with you know uh, the stories with, with each respective character in this game which is you know it's it's a shame that they didn't sort of have this technology or the the ability to do that at the time they made Tekken 2 because or Tekken 3 in fact because that was another great you know kind of storyline um because I, I feel that the devil angel thing was something that had a lot of a lot of potential in it and um yeah it's a shame that it's a shame that they they didn't invest themselves more fully in that or weren't able to invest themselves more fully in that i should say on on the note of the the storyline um as i said you know i'm not too concerned with the the storyline and the, the new characters such as zafina who i can't even remember her her sort of role in this but she sort of unlocks azazel or, or she's you know trying to stop people from unlocking azazel i can't i can't actually remember but um Azazel in general, just as a final boss in the in the arena mode, I really kind of hate this guy. He's really difficult to defeat, and it's just kind of I wish that they they'd done it more like Tekken Three, where you know if they had the ten full rounds that were sort of semi you know sort of challenging, and then you know you had your ending animation, that would have been cool. Instead, they've kind of stripped it down to four or five rounds and just given you this nigh on impossible final boss who. Uh, you know, I just really like, as I said before, you know, kind of it, my, my rule of thumb is that if I have to, you know, try and defeat a boss more than five times, I start getting really annoyed. And Azazel was just, you know, a perfect example of that. Um, and yeah, I do, I do feel of the few things that are of detriment to this game, that final boss is, is certainly one of them. Interestingly, while we're on the subject of game difficulty, I, and I still haven't actually managed to do this to this day, but um, on the scenario campaign mode, which is now the, the the method in which you you have to unlock new characters, I still haven't actually managed to unlock Yoshimitsu, and I haven't been able been able to play as him on Tekken Six because he's on this really ridiculously difficult hidden stage, and I've kind of used um, the, the the way Tekken Six works as I've briefly explained in Tekken in the Tekken 5 videos that the the customizations the, the the sunglasses and the accessories and the new clothes that you can give to your characters that you pay for with gold that you've collected during scenario campaign mode these new additions also have uh, status benefits to them as well so for example you know a certain jacket can boost your character's strength I've sort of really gone to town on my character who's Paul Phoenix with this to try and you know beat this stage to get Yoshimitsu and I just really, you know, I just, I haven't been, been able to do it today. Um, which I thought I'd note, because I don't actually find this as frustrating as, as the Azazel thing. And I think it's just a simple case that, you know, this goes back to my nostalgia-rooted admiration for this, this method of, of gameplay. I really do like the, um, the, the, the way in which scenario campaign mode and, you know, as I've said, Tekken Force before it kind of plays out. So there's, there's still a certain novelty to it for me. Uh, moving on lastly to music I suppose, uh, Tekken 6, as I've said this in every video, the first three Tekken games, Tekken's 1, 2 and 3, have the best soundtracks in my opinion. And Tekken 6 is much like Tekken 5 in my opinion, which is, it's it's not a bad soundtrack at all, but there aren't any specific tracks that actually stand, stand out for me. So where, where I have, you know, Tekken 3 on my mp3 player, you know, the, the soundtrack for Tekken 3 and Tekken 2 on my mp3 player, and, you know, there's songs that I actually kind of remember and I really like listening to. Uh, Tekken 6, nothing particularly stands out for me. So although I say it's good, it complements the, the each respective stage and things like that. But, um, you know, it just doesn't doesn't really uh, have that sort of, I, I suppose, novelty. Um, I don't know how to describe it. It just, it, they, it just simply doesn't stand out uh, enough for me. In fact, actually, I will just say the um, the actual scenario campaign mode where you're going around on the map, it has this sort of, again, jaunty orchestral sort of sound, um, sort of piece of music. And it's really, um, it's not bad, it's just, it's an ill fit for Tekken. As I've said before, I really like Tekken 5, I really like Tekken 3 and Tekken 2, because they have this sort of dark, atmospheric quality to them. They have really cool characters, really dark, brooding characters, really kind of subversive dark storylines where they all these games these three games uh two two three and five uh focus uh very heavily on the the mishima plot element of it so you know there's this kind of vengeful you know darkness to these games which tekken 6 doesn't really have because it's so broad and opened out 
with the whole Lars thing and the whole Azazel thing and all the new characters and that sort sort of thing. Um, and I think this is reflected in in the, the the just the general aesthetics and the music and the, the how the stages are constructed. In all, I think that Tekken Six stands up as a fantastic game, an extremely unique game, and I think it's very indicative of perhaps the direction that Namco are going in, and in fact the video games industry in general. Tekken's, by today's standards, you know, is quite quite an old franchise. You know, it started in 1994, so it's come a long way, and this is the most severe turn in its direction that we've actually seen to date it's you know it straddles the realms of fighting game you know with the with the scenario campaign mode it seems almost as if it's kind of going into a sort of you know, rpg based action adventure game it's very it's very curious that that this seems to be happening and I, i'm very interested to see what what tekken 7 will be like if indeed you know we have one i you know I'm, i think there might be and I've, I've been looking around on twitter and you know, there's there's rumor there's the rumor mill starting about Tekken Seven, but that said, yeah, I mean T Tekken Six is is very interesting in terms of, uh, you know how it's how it's approached, how how it's approached the genre of the fighting game, and how indeed it's kind of posited itself to, you know, the consumer to its audience. You know, as a, going back to what I said about having scenario campaign mode as the the most primary mode, and then right underneath that online mode. It looks like you know there's being a paradigm shift in console games to, you know, and I, I'm kind of stating the obvious here, but you know, a kind of a massive shift towards on online play, um, perhaps at the expense of more traditional gameplay elements such as the arcade mode that, that I mentioned earlier. So in all, um, relatively unconcerned by Tekken Six's plot I won't say disappointed because you know I, I went back to it and I, I moaned it about it in the Tekken 2 video but I went back and played through Tekken 6 and yes the storyline is quite bad and a bit you know ridiculous and tangential but it's made up for with the, with the with the quality of the gameplay and the diverse you know nature of the game you know all, all these different things that you can do um, the graphics the the quality of the the fluidity of the move sets and things like that um, yeah, it just makes it a truly fantastic game and a, a great Tekken installment uh, for the PlayStation 3.